Amen, amen. Thanks for being here today. How's it going, family? Good to see you. Good to be with you all. It's, uh, it, this is Super Bowl week for senior pastors. This is, this is the Holy Week leading into Easter. Uh, it's Palm Sunday. We're celebrating when Jesus rode into town on a one-horse open sleigh into Jerusalem. Uh, just celebrate. Uh, listen, I want to say hi to all of our visitors because I know that some of you, uh, uh, people have asked you for maybe weeks, for maybe months, and you're here today. We're glad you're here visiting with us. Hope you find us to be, you know, relatively normal people who just love the Lord and he's changed our life. That song says it all. And if you're watching us today uh, online, which I suspect we'll have a really high attendance online today, we're glad you're here. I want to say hi to Greg from Boonville, Missouri, and Emily from Lincoln, and Griffith family from Gibson City, uh, Miles from Indiana, and uh, we are Miles from Indiana, by the way, but Miles from Indiana, uh, and Latrell from West Lafayette, Indiana, and Greg from Tennessee. Welcome to all of you watching us today. This is a very special day. It's, it's a baptism Sunday. And uh, I always think it's, we, we talked last week about spiritual warfare, and I believe that, you know, the snow is kind of a part of that. In fact, I'll tell you this, in our Bloomington campus right now, they've lost power. And so they're going through this worship service here in about, I don't know, about half an hour with no power, acoustic set, and we're going to see what God does, all right? Snow's not going to stop us today. Power's not going to stop us today. We're going to preach the Word of God and see what God does, all right? So it's an awesome week. It's going to be incredible stuff coming up. Over 150 people signed up last week to, to fast and pray from Thursday at sundown to Friday at sundown. It's still not too late to sign up on our website to do that. I believe God's in the works of doing something amazing uh, in us. And to get us ready for our Bible time today, we're going to be uh, in Matthew chapter 9 today. We've gotten through Matthew 8 and now these miracle stories that Matthew tells us about Jesus. And Matthew 9, starting with verse 1. And to get us ready for our teaching, I brought us a mat. And some of you guys recognize this and some of you don't because it's an exercise mat, all right? Uh, and, and I asked our sports outreach team, hey, would you get me a mat for Sunday? And they brought me a pink one. So um, I, I see Ratasha's hand all over this, actually. But um, this is going to be an illustration. Did this mat is used. I mean, I've seen people use it on the beach so they can exercise without getting sand. People use it, uh, you know, like in parks to have outdoor exercise time. They use it, of course, in the gym. I've used them uh, before to do sit-ups. Um, it can be used for all kinds of things. Uh, it can, it, uh, back in the day, Pilates. Today, uh, yoga or goat yoga. <laughs> goat yoga, y'all. People sometimes say to me as a pastor, I just don't understand God. You know what I don't understand? Goat yoga. <laughs> God's way easier to understand than that, all right? But whatever your workout is, uh, this mat is representative today of what we're going to look at in Matthew chapter 9. Because in Matthew 9, uh, a man that's on a bed is brought to Jesus. That's the, the Greek uh, interpretation of that. But it was probably more like a mat. Okay, not the kind of bed that we sleep on. But the word indicates a, a cushion or a couch or a mat. And, um, and the context of the story uh, makes me think of um, this kind of lightweight kind of mat. So we're going to get back to that in just a moment. This is what the story's about today. Matthew chapter 9, verse 1. Let's read the word of the Lord together and read about this guy who's brought to Jesus uh, on his mat because he's paralyzed. Here it is, the word of the Lord. And getting into a boat, he crossed over and came to his own city. And behold, some people brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. And behold, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise up and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he then said to the paralytic, rise, pick up your bed and go home. And he rose and went home. When the crowd saw it, they were afraid. They glorified God who had given such authority to man. Let's pray and ask the Lord to speak to us today in this powerful story. God, um, you see every person here, every fear, every heart, every past, every hurt, every future, every um, relationship. And so I'm asking today that you would do what only you can do by your spirit. You would convict, you would change, you would move, you would make this um, crazy, snowy Sunday in April turn into that day, that day when we walk. And uh, so God, through this story that we believe is historical and inspired, I pray that you give me the words by your spirit to speak now. 
Prepare hearts, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, um, today's really simple. Uh, This story kind of carries itself. I don't have to be real cute with this story. It's a great story. I just want to look at two things that Jesus says to people who are sitting on the mat, or as in your notes, two words from Jesus from people who are paralyzed, for those who are paralyzed. But first, we have to tell you the story. How did we get here to this mat? How did we get a man on a mat in front of Jesus? As in most of these miracle sermons, as we've said before, in both Mark and Luke, the other gospels, they tell the same story about Jesus, but they give different details. Not a different story, same story, just different details. Remember, Matthew doesn't really care so much about the story. Matthew's saying, I just want to tell you about Jesus. He has authority. Mark and Luke, they're telling stories. And so there's a really interesting story for how we get to this man on the mat in front of Jesus, but I want to give you some context here, all right? So you guys, we've looked at this before. Uh, this is Capernaum. This was the, when, it, when it says in verse 2 that Jesus went to his town, this is his hometown, grew up in Nazareth, right? used his ministry base as Capernaum on the Sea of Galilee. In the last three weeks, if you've been here, we've gone across the sea, big storm right there, across the sea, demons here. We circle back. He goes back to his home in Capernaum. Now, what happened the last time that he was in Capernaum? He healed a bunch of people. So guess what happens the next time he comes to people, uh, to Capernaum? Tons of sick people, wouldn't you? Jesus is coming to town. Okay, I got some sick people, some sick friends. I got some sick friends. I need to get them to Jesus. I I didn't mean that to be a joke. It just entertained me. (laughs) You have sick friends? I do. All right. Uh, This is a picture of Capernaum. In fact, this is um, the the, um, remains of a second century synagogue. And you can see down here at the bottom, there's kind of this this layer. It's a foundation. It's probably remains from the first century synagogue. Jesus taught in this synagogue. Okay? This is the place he probably healed the man with the withered hand. This other picture, this is hard to see because it's underneath a chapel that they built, but this is reputedly the house, the remains of the house of Peter's mother-in-law. Remember, she was sick there, and Jesus healed her. The reason I show you this house is because the house is the story that Matthew doesn't tell, but Mark and Luke tell. Mark and Luke tell the story, and again, it gets, it's the same man, and it's, the, it's the, this paralyzed man. The word paralyzed here, by the way, um, comes from a Greek word, uh, parlutikos. It's just a transliteration, paralyzed, but it means to, to be loose or to be loose on the side. So you get the idea. It's a loosening of muscles. It could be muscular dystrophy. It, it could be ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. It could be just uh, this guy had an accident. Uh, and somehow he was paralyzed. Whatever it is, he needs a mat to sit on, and he can't walk on his own. And in the story, in, 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 I love this story. It's one of my favorite stories in the Bible. In Mark and Luke, uh, the Bible says that four of his friends carried this man on a mat, and they came to Jesus because, you know, it's buzzing in town. Jesus is in town. Grab every leper, blind person, lame person, deaf person, and just get him in Jesus' face. Well, there's a crowd. They're, the house is crowded. They can't get to the door. So you imagine these four friends going, today's the day you're going to walk, man. Today's the day. And they take it, and it's like they can barely see the house. There's so many people around. And probably some scary, there's probably some demon possession going on. There's blind people, deaf people. I mean, everybody. And, and, and probably the guy on the mat, I always envision this picture, the guy on the mat who's going, uh, man, it's just not, t- Jesus is busy today. Let's just come back some other time. And probably some of the friends were going, I, you know, I don't, I don't know how we're going to do this, man. We tried, sorry. But Jesus is, is not going to be able to heal today. Maybe some other time he's going to be around again, I'm sure. But there, I just think that there's one friend that said, I got an idea. I got an idea. You know how we can get him into the house in front of Jesus? We can just bust through the roof. <laughs> and I just imagine some of the guys looking at him going, are you crazy? I don't know how they got this guy to the roof. I don't know how they got him to the building. I'm imagining now there are ropes that are tied on either side of the bed. This lame guy, I've said this before, this lame guy says, no, 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 please, please, put me down, put me down. And there's tons of people around, and they're raising him up. He's like, hi, you know, (laughs) my friend's idea, sorry, I didn't. And they start tearing a hole through the roof of this guy's house and they get him right where Jesus is and they lower him down 
All of that is the story that Matthew doesn't tell. Matthew just says, well, some friends, some people actually brought him a paralytic lying on a bed, on a mat. And so here we are, a paralyzed man lying in front of Jesus uh, on a mat on the floor. And I just want to point out what Jesus says. First of all, Jesus says to him, he, he, he says, your sins are forgiven. I want you to hear that today. For those of us who are paralyzed in our souls, in our, in our spirits today, your sins are forgiven. See, Jesus saw their faith. You see that in verse two? When, when, uh, obvious, it's faith, right? What would you do if you saw people so determined to get someone to Jesus, they dug a hole in somebody's roof? I don't know who paid for that, by the way. It's probably insured. Uh, and... What kind of faith does it take to go to these extreme measures to get this? And so the Bible says that Jesus saw their faith. I think the friend's faith and the, friend, and the faith of the man who was sitting there. He saw the faith of the friends. They're good friends. They believe two things about Jesus. Jesus can heal our friend. And number two, if we get him near Jesus, he's going to walk. They believe that with all their heart. They need to get their friend to Jesus, whatever it takes, no matter what it, they have to do. East View Christ followers, I just want to challenge us today in this holy week. Do you have this kind of faith and determination when it comes to your family and friends who do not yet, yet know Jesus as their Lord and Savior? What would you do? What would you do to get your friend close to Jesus? I, I'll tell you this, you'll never regret getting your friends close to Jesus, no matter what. And so this week, I, 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 wanna, I wanna encourage you to use these cards and to make, a, make a, a, a concerted effort to not take no for an answer from your friends and get them here for Easter Sunday. I, I, I got this, this cool text from a, a, a family and friends in our church, a small group in our church this week. They went to Uptown Normal and passed out um, invitation cards to Eastview. But this is, this is their picture. You see the Easter bunnies there, and then one of them dressed up as the Easter bunny, and they went around passing out cards to invite people to Easter Sunday. And the funniest thing about this is that I know who's in the Easter bunny suit, all right? <laughs> but what would you do? That's a creative way. What can you do creatively this week to get people's attention to say, hey, come to church next Sunday at Eastview Christian Church? That's part of our job. This is digging through the roof to get people close to Jesus Christ. Here's what I know. This paralyzed man, and this is true of your lost friends, the paralyzed man is eternally grateful that they dug through the roof and got him close to Jesus. Never, never complained about that ever again. But Jesus also sees the faith in the man. It says when Jesus saw their faith, and it's plural, and I believe he's talking about not only the friends who brought him, but this man himself. And so he says to him, take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. It takes faith to be forgiven. There's never a forgiveness story in the scripture where somebody doesn't believe that Jesus can do it. Whatever Jesus seeing is on the inside of the heart of this man. He sees that this man has the faith to be forgiven. Now, I'm, I'm going to talk about that in just a moment, but I want to quickly go to another group of people that were in the room that day, the scribes. These are the, the Bible teachers, the elite spiritual guys in the first century, the scribes. And uh, they begin, they see Jesus. Now again, Jesus is just so uh, brilliant and so perfect in his teaching. He could have easily said, you're healed, dude. Greek word, dudikos. Just kidding you, I don't, I don't. <laughs> there's, not a, there's not a Greek word for dude. <laughs> okay, uh, but he, he could have said, you're healed. And that would have been it. And people would have been amazed, and the man would have walked. But Jesus says, I want to teach something here. He goes, your sins are forgiven. Now, he knows the guys are in the room, the, the spiritual watchdogs, the biblical elite. And they begin whispering in, um, among themselves, or maybe just thinking inside themselves, this, this, this reality. He's blaspheming. He's saying what only God can say. They know the Old Testament inside out. They know the part of the Isaiah scroll. I've got it there in your notes. Uh, that says, I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. I will not remember your sins. That's from God. But here's a man forgiving thing. Now, here's what you need to know about Jesus. If you're in a room with him and you're thinking something, he knows it. So you're getting ready to be a part of the sermon illustration. Because he, it, the Bible, it literally, look what it says here. Um, it says, Jesus, verse 4, knowing their thoughts. That word knowing there in the Greek language is actually the same as seeing their faith. He saw their thoughts. He, he sees what they're thinking. 
And so he goes, oh, this is a perfect opportunity. I'm gonna take this opportunity to teach something. These scribes who are experts in theology, they're missing two things. They're missing number one, that Jesus is God in the flesh. And they're missing number two, their own sin. See, in some ways, these guys are right. Because they look at the paralytic, they look at the paralyzed man sitting on this mat, and they say, he's a sinner. Why? Because in the first century, if you had some kind of deformity, if you had some kind of disease, if you were sick, if, you, if something bad happened to you, it was because God's getting you. You did something bad, God is punishing you, and it's visible. We all know you're a sinner because you can't walk. And, um, and they held that really strongly in the, in the first century. What they're missing is the gospel that we preach here at Eastview Christian Church that we all just need to hear today, Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. They're right, he was a sinner. What they didn't know is that they're sinners too. Because all, how many? All. Me, even me, pastor? Yes, you, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So they, they miss the fact that they are forgiven or they are sinful too and they need as much forgiveness as this man. And they also miss the fact that Jesus is God and we'll get to that in just a moment. But I want you to think of it just a moment this morning. I want you to think of your sins. Just think of your sins. Some of them are hard to remember. Some of them are from your past and they're big in your mind. Some of them are from your past and they're big to other people. Some of them have altered your life's course. Some of your sins are lingering still. Some of your sins you committed Friday night. Some of your sins you're thinking about right now. Some of your sins you're gonna commit in the future. I want you to think about your sins, your greed, your lust, your adultery, your cheating, your lying, your abuse with words or with physicality, your gossiping, your mean words, your prejudice against people not like you. I, I, I'm sure I've nailed one of your sins. I want you to hear this today. Jesus says to sinners who can't walk because of their sin, your sins are forgiven. The word forgiven literally means are sent away. Your sins are sent away. I want you to hear that from God today through Jesus Christ, his son, and I want you to understand that he has the authority to do it. That was the question. Remember, we've, with this whole, this whole series, we've talked about the authority of Jesus. What does he have the power and the right to do whenever he wants to? Right? We, we, we started in chapter seven, he has the authority to teach. He, he teaches like authority. Man, and he has authority to cleanse the leper. He has authority to heal the sick. And he has authority over the storms of life. And he has authority over the evil spirits and Satan. And all the things are great. All the things are powerful. Because I have storms in my life and I need Jesus to take them away. And I have uh, sickness in my life and I need Jesus to heal me. And I have stuff in my life I need him to cleanse out of me. I have, you know, a spiritual warfare, and I need him to protect me. All those things are great. But Jesus comes to do something even greater. He has authority over sin. And he looks at these guys, and he says, listen, um, I, the, you guys, I, I want to ask you a question. You guys that are questioning why I forgave this man. Which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven? Or get up and walk? Because Jesus is saying to them, for me it's the same. I have authority to do it all. I have authority to say, get up and walk. I have authority to forgive sins because I'm the son of man. Did you notice that title? You ever read that in the New Testament? Some of you that are maybe new to the faith and you go, son of man. Why does Jesus always call himself the son of man? Well, if you, in fact, it's his, favorite, it's his favorite name for himself. He calls himself the son of man in scripture more than any other name. And the reason is, is because it points back to Daniel 7. If you want to read that later, you can. But in Daniel chapter 7, Daniel gives this vision about the son of man who is the son of man, capital. He is the, the human that's born, the son of man. But he's also the son of God. And this supernatural, God-like figure mentioned in Daniel 7, Jesus knows, here's what Jesus knows. Jesus is so genius, y'all. I know I'm not telling you a newsflash with that. But he goes, you know what will trigger these guys more than just about anything else because they're Old Testament scholars? If I call myself the son of man, it's really gonna flip them out. He made them matter, referring to himself as the son of man, than he did saying, your sins are forgiven. So now they're really heated. But he goes, I just want you guys to know something, that I have authority to do what I'm doing right now. 
because I'm the son of man. And um, the, the authority that he has is greater than everything we've looked at so far. I'm glad that Jesus sometimes stills my storms. I'm glad that Jesus protects me from the evil one by his blood. I'm glad that Jesus can heal us, and we witness miracle healings around here all the time. I'm glad that Jesus teaches the truth with authority. But you know what I really need? You know what I really need? I need somebody to deal with my sin and the death that comes with it. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 56 and 57, talk about the last enemy to be defeated is death. And that, that enemy is there because I sin, and because I sin, I die. What does it say in Romans 6, 23? Another verse we say around here a lot. The wages of sin is death. That's the way it is. It's just that clear. If you sin, you're sitting on a mat that leads to death and dying. Today, if you're visiting with us today, you may not look like you're paralyzed to others, Today, even if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you come in here, you're smiling, you're talking about the snow, it's the Holy Week, and, and you've got different conversations, and nobody can look into your eyes and down into your soul and go, man, they're messed up. But some of us are. Some of us in here today are paralyzed because of our sin. I've got good news for you today, especially if you're visiting, especially if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The wages of sin is death, Romans 6, 23 tells us, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's life, amen? You can clap for scripture all day long. Don't clap for my nonsense, but when I'm quoting scripture, you can, you can give God a, at a boy <laughs> or at a God, I don't know. Today, every one of us, all of us, you need to hear this. When Jesus says to this paralytic, your sins are forgiven, he's saying it to us because he has the power. And next week, we're going to celebrate. This is a spoiler alert. Jesus raises from the dead. <laughs> and, uh, and because of that, he has authority over our sin and the death that that sin brings. You see, here's the thing about Jesus. Jesus sees what other people don't see. This man who can't walk, this paralyzed man, everybody's going, oh, this poor guy's paralyzed. Jesus goes, oh, this poor guy's got sin. He always looks on the inside first. And so he takes care of the most important thing he can do for this man. He says, I forgive your sin. Your sins are forgiven. And today, if you're not a follower of Jesus Christ, I'm not sure why you're here. I'm not sure how you got here. Maybe you skied here. I don't know. But I know that Jesus, what he wants to do in your life today, not fix your marriage, not get you a job, not make your finances better, not all the stuff that's visible on the outside. He wants first and foremost to say to you, your sins are forgiven. He wants to take away your sin. Oh, I mean, if you're watching me online right now, start hitting that prayer button or talking to somebody there. If God's moving, please, in your heart, he wants to forgive you today. And in just a few moments, we're gonna make a chance here in this in this worship time for you to come and make a decision for Jesus for the first time, if that's you, and be baptized in front of all these other people who have made that decision and been baptized. Just a moment. Back to our man in the paralyzed, our paralyzed man in the story. Um, we get to halfway through verse six and he's still paralyzed, <laughs> right? They, why did they lower him through the roof? Why did these people bring this man before Jesus? Because, why? He wants to walk. Because they believe that he can walk and they believe that Jesus, Jesus has seen their faith. He's forgiven this man's sin. He's seen the lack of faith of the scribes. And he's asserted his authority to forgive. But the man is still waiting to walk. And walking is the point. His friends brought him so he could walk. We don't know very many details. Maybe he walked till he was 20, had an accident, and he's paralyzed. Maybe he walked and slowly over time, like some of the muscular dystrophy diseases, he began to not be able to walk and eventually was sitting on a mat. We don't know the story and the details, but here's what we know. His friends and this man, they were thinking, if only Jesus could touch me, I could walk. All I wanna do is walk. And Jesus says that this is what he can do. See, walking is not only the point of this man in the physical sense, it's the point in our spiritual sense. Walking is the point of following Jesus. 
In a few minutes, we're gonna witness some baptisms and it's a picture of walking. Romans 6, 4, for those of you who have been baptized, you've experienced this. Romans 6, 4 says, we were buried with him in baptism into his death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might, listen, walk in the newness of life. When you're paralyzed and you, then you get to walk, guess what that's called? Newness of life. My life is different now. My life has changed. I'm not confined to this man. I'm not confined to this paralysis. I can walk now. And baptism is a picture of that faith aligned with Jesus Christ in his death and his burial. We saw it on the video. Old self, dead, dying, and we come up and it's a new life. God has made us new by the blood of Jesus Christ. I wanna ask you this question. It's a rhetorical question, but if you wanna shout out, you can. Do you wanna walk today? Amen. This man wanted to walk. He came to Jesus because he wanted to walk. And if you do, you're like this guy in Matthew 9. You're gonna have to act on what you believe. This is one of the most incredible miracles in the Bible because he's paralyzed. He has faith Jesus can forgive him. He has faith that Jesus can heal him. But here he sits. And I think that Jesus says to him now the most miraculous thing, crazy thing of all. Look what he says. Rise, last part of verse six, pick up your bed and go home. I do not know what's more surprising, Jesus saying your sins are forgiven or telling a man who can't walk to rise. It's crazy. Well, Jesus, if I could rise, I would have walked in here and I would have been amazed at your teaching. I wouldn't have to make a scene coming through the roof. If I could walk, if I could rise, if I could pick up my bed, I wouldn't have this bed. If I could w pick it up and go home, I'd be at home. I'm here because I can't walk. And I think what Jesus is saying, I want you to notice something. Jesus doesn't touch him, doesn't lay hands on him, doesn't even say a prayer over him. He just looks at him and says, well, get up and do what you believe I can make you do. There's no hints. Somebody here today is waiting for God to move and he's waiting for you to move. That's just Holy Spirit, not in the notes. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you, sometimes faith is just get up, rise, because I know that you trust me to do it and so now I wanna know if you trust me enough to obey. It seems the Apostle Paul is in the same condition in, in Acts 22. He's telling his story. He's recalling when he was converted on the road to Damascus. And uh, he's been blind for three days. He's seen a bunch of visions of God. And he's become an apostle. And, and he's got this message that God wants him to share. And the guy that's healing him and heals him of his blindness, Ananias, here's what Paul recalls that he says to him. And now, what are you waiting for? Rise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on his name. You see, when you realize the paralysis of sin and you realize Jesus' authority over it, then you have to put that faith into action. You have to do something. You have to take a step, even when you're not sure if you can take a step. You have to rise even though these legs cannot hold you. They never have been able to, or maybe they've been for a long time. Something in that man said, okay, I'm gonna try to stand up now. And he does. Peter says on the first day of the church, what we're gonna witness here in a few moments, a 2,000 year old tradition. You see, it's, it's the inside that God changes. It's the inside that God moves in. But the Bible says on that very first Sunday, that first sermon, the people said, okay, we believe. We killed Jesus, we're sorry, what should we do? And Peter says, now you gotta act. You gotta rise, you repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You've got to do something now that you believe, now that you know who I am. Now you've got to do something. The question remains today, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for today? See, Jesus has used all of his power to save us and to heal us, but we're going to have to get up this morning. Today, the word from Jesus to every one of us is not only your sins are forgiven, but, but his word to us this morning is rise up and walk. I don't, I don't know how we all got here today, but, but this is a visual for where we all are right now. Every one of us, we're sitting on a mat. Some of us are paralyzed by our past. 
Even after accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we're sitting on the mat of our past, and we're just so sure there's no way we're going to walk because our past, our sin's too big. Maybe you're not a follower of Jesus, and you're sitting there going, listen, I, I know you baptize people here, but you've never baptized somebody as bad as me. And you're sitting on that. And Jesus is saying, rise and walk. Amen. Some of you are here today, and you're sitting on the mat of apathy you're not only retired, you're tired. And uh, you're sitting here, you've been saved, but you go, my day's passed, I can't serve anymore, I, I can't really do anything for the kingdom anymore. You're sitting on a mat of apathy and contentment, and, and Jesus is saying to you as a follower, get up, rise up and walk. Yeah. Some of you are here today and you're sitting on the mat that is other people's opinion of you. Been told your whole life who you are, what you are, what you can and cannot do, and what you're going to be. And uh, you've let them define who you are, and you're sitting on the mat of what everybody else thinks. Can't walk, paralyzed by your reputation and what other people think about you. And Jesus is saying to you today, hey, ignore those people. There were scribes in the room when this man got up. They didn't believe in anything. But it, he listened to Jesus, and he got up. And he's, and he's saying to you today, rise and walk. So most of us in here today have made a decision to follow Jesus Christ, but some of us here today have not. And that's what Baptism Sunday is about. You're, you're sitting in a mat of sin, and you don't know it. Maybe, maybe your life looks pretty good from the outside. Maybe your life feels pretty good to you. But inside, in your soul, in your spirit, you're paralyzed, man. Sin will always paralyze you. It will always keep you from walking the way that Jesus wants you to walk. Some of us here today are sitting on a mat of our sin. And uh, the question of the day is, do you want to walk? Are you ready to walk? Uh, we're going to offer a chance for you to walk today. We'll literally walk down the aisle. In fact, we've, we've got dozens of pastors, staff members, volunteers who are followers of Christ that are going to greet you down here. It, it, please, if you're here and you've said, yes, I'll do that in this service, would you guys just go ahead and take your place down front here, all across the front. And uh, somebody please come to the middle aisle here too, would you? Uh, so we're ready for you to come and talk with you. These people are just here to receive you. They're not awesome, you know, super spiritual people. They just love the Lord. The Lord saved them. They're here to talk to you. And um, we've, we've got, we're ready for you. We've got towels. These are just symbolic. There's real towels back there in the back. <laughs> um, today, you can be baptized in our, our baptistry here that's permanent. It's here all the time. I'm not exaggerating. Thousands have been baptized over there. Uh, you can be baptized over here in this portable baptistry. There's changing rooms on this side as well. And uh, hundreds have been baptized here. You can go out. If you don't want to walk in front of this whole crowd, you can rise up and walk out into the atrium. You can walk to the, our water feature out there we call the well. And you can be baptized. Hundred, hundreds of people have been baptized there throughout the years. We're ready for you. So, so what is your roof today? What is the thing? I mean, listen, somebody came probably that day to Jesus' house where he was teaching, and they didn't get healed because they walked away. What's your roof? What's that thing? Oh, I don't want to. I can't. My hair, my clothes. I'm embarrassed. It's snowing outside. What's your thing today? What's your reason for not rising and walking? God's calling you. And with everything within me, I, I, we're, we're, we pray for this day and we plan for this day and we sing this day because we believe that there are people right here symbolically, spiritually sitting on this mat of sin. And today, Jesus is saying, rise and walk, your sins are forgiven. So I'm gonna ask you all if you would rise. Go ahead and stand. And uh, we're going to sing some songs.
And as these songs of praise are being sung about God's deliverance and his love and his healing in our life, an ability to make paralyzed people walk, paralyzed in their sin, to get up and walk. Today, would you do that? If you're watching us online, would you do that? Just punch that button that says, I wanna talk to someone and they will talk to you. We will arrange your baptism wherever you are in the world. Today is a day to walk. And so um, I'm not gonna say any words uh, as we get ready to sing. I'm just gonna show you what that man did 2,000 years ago and what you can do today by walking down here and giving your life to Jesus Christ. It's just like this.